All right, I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order of the Falkroft Borough Council at 702 uh, in the evening, November the 17th, 2020. Um, in the absence of the mayor, um, uh, I suppose I'll lead us in the flag salute and invocation. Um, we could just take a moment of silence uh, for all those uh, ill from this pandemic and those who've passed. And then we'll go ahead to the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, I'll turn it over to um, the borough manager for the roll call. Council President Papaleo. Present. Councilman Kyle Willis. Present. Councilwoman Lee Daly, I believe she's absent. Lee is uh, not present this evening. She Councilman mean... Nick Waters. Here. Councilwoman Melinda Isaac. Present. Councilman Jason McWiggan. Councilman Jason McWiggan, is he on here? Uh, he is not present at the moment. All right. Councilman Robert Ruskowski. Sure. Mayor Fr Bob Fry, I already know he's not on. Alex? I'm present. And I am present. Okay. All right, very good. Um, so moving on to audience participation. There was none. None? Nope. Okay. Nada. All right, very good. Moving on to the engineer's report, Ms. Catania. Thank you. I have a few things this evening. Um, first, uh, I did contact DEP. Uh, I spoke with, with Stephanie Rittenhouse. She has not had the opportunity to review the 537. However, she feels that she will have it done by Friday. Um, the environmental study was completed. And I believe that is all for the building. The uh, road program, I do have an invoice for AF Damon, that project is substantially complete. The invoice amount is $82,409.99. Uh, next month, we'll have the final change order and retainage. We're doing a punch list currently. Um, the road program 2021, as I discussed last week, uh, I was hoping to have the number from PICO for the restoration which would give us the second lane. So we would do curb to curb for a road program next year. They are offering, and I'm giving you a, a, a round number. Um, it's with some change, $400,300. Uh, that, that represents a 50% of the, of the cost estimate that I provided to you. So I would recommend that we accept that fee in lieu uh, they'll start the paperwork once they have notification from the borough that, that you are accepting that, that restoration number. And we should have a check between 60 and 90 days from the date that they, they submit it. How much is uh, that, 400300 Yeah. Right. My number and their number was, was off by a little bit. That's why I was, I'm giving you a round number for the, for the time being. I think theirs was uh, 400, 382, and mine was 400, uh, 388. So we're still trying to work those numbers out, uh, but we should have a final final. Uh, it'll be somewhere around that, that 400,388, 385, somewhere around there. And that does give us roughly half of what we need to resurface all the roads? That's yeah. great. Okay, perfect. So. Um, the other part of this is when we do send the notification, I'd like to let them know that they need to do a final cleanup of all of the existing trenches. Um, I brought that up again to them last week while I was out there. Uh, they were supposedly working on it, but I can tell you that based on one of my inspector's comments, that has not been completed as of yet. 
So I wanna make sure that in this process, they will be doing the permanent trench restoration. And then we in the spring would come in and do the milling and paving from curb to curb. Um, that being said, I'd like to get make sure that everyone is on board with that before we move forward. So I can let them them know tomorrow. Yeah, I, I think I think that's I'm on board with it. Does anybody object to that? No, I did want to mention that the the trenches are still the the, the patching in the trenches is still a bit of a it's 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 a bit of an issue. Yes, <laughs> so thank is. you for noticing. <laughs> that's my job. I notice those things. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. So as long as they get that uh, smoothed out, you know, that I think we're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what I'd like, what I'd actually like to do is, is get an authorization to bid that work. Um, if I can get the bids out now, we could be first on the list for when plants open again in April. So I'd like to be able to get that started, get everything in process so that um, come January, we'll have a contract in place and we'll be able to, to get them started as soon as we can. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I think, uh, do you want a resolution tonight for that? or We could do that next month. I just want to have something ready for, for the January. For January, again, plants won't open until April, but I want to I want to make sure that in the contract that, and it'll be something that'll be in our bid documents, that they'll have to start the project um, first thing in, in April. And we might get them at that, at that, at that, at uh, that, at that cost level, because it's probably going to go up, right? Well, yeah, I'm hoping. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I want to do it now, okay. because I see that we're going to we're going to have a, a surge next year. Okay. Um, the other part of this, uh, speaking of bids, is we have the backhoe bid. Uh, the specifications are almost completed, so I expect to have that online next week. Uh, made some tweaks to the information that we got, mainly because I wanted to make it more clear as to what it was that the borough was asking. Um, the uh, community development block grant, we have the hearing I'm assuming scheduled for next month. We're required to have a hearing in order for us to put any applications in to the county. I want to just want to make sure that that was taken care of. That will have to be advertised at least 10 days prior to uh, whatever meeting we would plan to do that. Our manager, did you catch that? Yep, I got it. Uh, Alex, do we need to do it on a specific date and, and or Lisa, is there a specific date and or time period that it has to be done in? Well, you need to have, typically what we've done in the past is just do it during a meeting or right prior to a meeting. So for example, if we did it at, at our um, workshop, at your committee meeting, um, we could do it like 15 minutes before. Typically there's not much comment with regard to, to any of the projects. Um, it's very rare actually that we have any, any public dis discuss any of the, the projects that we put forward. You'll be able to select a a primary project, a priority project, and an alternate. Um, I can probably get that in the newspaper for directly prior to our committee meeting next month. It's got to be 10 days prior to, you yeah, got to have 10 days notice. Yeah. Right. So we could probably get that out if we could get that tomorrow. Yeah. Um, into the Let's, newspaper, sent out to the newspaper tomorrow. I think we could probably get right. it in the newspaper with the time. Just a, just a couple other things. Uh, there's a zoning hearing scheduled for the new 7-Eleven. Uh, that's going to be on December the 2nd. Uh, we're waiting. I actually have the plans for Safe Store uh, to do the re last review prior to recording. So I'll be reviewing and signing those plans, getting them over to the borough for the borough signatures for those. Um, we also did a land development review for the Popeyes, which is the lot two of the um, Dollar General land development. That's probably the best way to, if I said brand properties, I'm not sure that everyone would know what that was. 
Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention about that Brent properties, I had reported previously that we have, um, we've been waiting for the DEP approval for the changes in the, in the rain garden, the retention basin that's in the rear of that property. And we did, uh, this was on Thursday, received that, that approval, DEP approval from, from uh, Bowler Engineering. So that will be a go. They're, they're looking for uh, a cost estimate from us. There has to be an update to the a developer's agreement. Um, waiting for some information from Bowler. As soon as I have that, I'll get that over to the solicitor so he can do the necessary amendments. Alex, I believe that um, Joe D'Amico has already reached out to you. Um, I believe so. Yeah, okay. I'll go back there, but yeah, I believe if I saw not, someone. If not, he will be, because um, I think Lee wants to get started as soon as possible. All right. And I believe that's all I have, unless anyone has any questions. No. No. Lisa, very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, moving on to um, public finance and administration. Uh, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to approve the bill list for the month of October 2020. So moved. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I'd like to entertain a My motion. Apologies. My for apologies, uh, Joe, for this one. The uh, typo, it says September 2020, just to be clear, that's October. Uh, I, have, uh, I have October. For the one you're about to do. Oh, okay. Forgive me. All right. So I'd like to entertain a motion uh, to approve the treasurer's report for the month of October. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Borough Manager, before you publish this agenda on the website, please make the edit to the agenda. I believe the agenda is already posted, but... Uh... Pull it down and fix it. Okay. All right. Uh, I'd like to um, discuss the engagement with. Uh, well, I think this the, the, we've shifted. We've shifted gears on this. So let me let me preface th this next item um, with some backstory. Uh, we were about to engage with a company um, for the launching of a mobile app, a Falcroft Borough or Falcroft Resident, whatever it is, mobile app for residents to load onto their smartphones. Um, this app is sort of the segue into the next generation of how we're going to be communicating with our residents. Um, we uh, actually were contacted by another company that does the same thing um, with, with a sort of a better, a better price point. I'm going to let Kyle talk about it for a minute. I kind of, I delegated this to him just to, for, for uh, fact gathering. Um, and he's, he's done a remarkable job. Kyle, can you just sort of fill the gaps in for people to let them uh, yes. sort of see them in? So um, the purpose behind the types of apps and programs we were looking for was twofold. One was the communication portion for giving app for residents to be able to put on their phone so that they can both submit uh, requests and things like that to the borough, but also we can send out alerts and notifications to them. It would act as a portal for information. So when it's trash picked up, think just kind of like all those types of things that are going to be more likely people are going to look for from the website. It'll kind of help them get to that information a little bit quicker. The big piece is that request portion. So they see a pothole, they want to report it. They can take a picture of it on their phone, submit the request to the borough, and it goes into the other portion of the program, which is a CRM portion, which means many different things for many different people. But in this case, it's a relation manager for citizens. So we kind of can track, you know, someone put in this request, you know, we can make sure that it's followed up on information is sent back to them. It kind of allows us to do that and uh, handle that volume of requests that we may be getting or at different times in a more efficient and effective way. So no one's requests or anything like that is getting dropped or anything like in those ways as volume possibly would increase. Um, the, we, I reached out to a number of different companies, some that didn't do what we were looking for. One, the reason why um, the whole dynamics has changed a little bit, one of them 
uh, had responded to me, but it went into spam. So it got kind of caught up until this most recent email, which somehow made it through. So now we have another company at a different price point that is far preferable, but has all the same services and everything else. And we have to make sure we're fitting under the, any rules about, you know, engaging with these companies. So we're kind of taking it slowly. So we're just discussing it here today. And then possibly the next time around after we've had a chance for everyone to kind of look at what the program offers. Um, there's a video of the demo that I received that I'm going to send out to everyone so they can kind of see what it looks like and, you know, what we'd be getting from it. Um, but that's kind of the details. I don't know if anyone has any questions. What's the, do we, we do, think, go ahead, go ahead, I'm Amanda, sorry, go. do we think that um, our residents would actually download the app and stuff? I mean, so the only information that I can directly claim on that one is, is that the school district has an app as well. And um, the reason we, one of the reasons we started looking into this directly, or at least we kind of pushed for it was also because Lee was pushing it because she has the app for the school district and we know people are using it for the school district. My school district has an app. So there are examples of these types of, you know, apps being used, this, these companies are out there. Um, so they're obviously being used. And I know I had one when I was, you know, in Westchester and other places. So I would assume people will use them. If we advertise and we push it and we, you know, sell it, it will be more likely, like people will be more likely to download it and use it. Okay. Yeah, I other, think the app's a, go ahead. I'm sorry. I think the app's a great idea. I was just curious before we spend money on service. That Listen, we actually have enough of the residents to for as much as it. I see them Amazon Prime vans in this town, people are using apps. So <laughs> okay, it's it's definitely out there. So hey Joe, I know I would yes, download it. Yes, sir. So just to give you a little insight with that app that we put on for the Crime Watch. Yep. Um, that has been awesome for us. We've gotten so many tips on uh, wanted people, missing people, um, and we didn't even push it out as far as we can go because of COVID yet. So, but it is, it does work. Nice, nice. So it, it does, okay, that's good feedback. So, so if you're talking about that as far as the borough as well, I think you'll get more information, be more user-friendly, almost like a community policing, but you'll be getting the community because they don't really want to talk. They want to send stuff in. They really don't want to talk to anybody. Right. Right. And I think we're noticing that like, um, you know, with a lot of the community forums, you know, they, I'm noticing that they, they want to go there first when, you know, they could pick up the phone, but maybe it's not that easy. Maybe, maybe, maybe people who don't want to really have a, a verbal volley with anybody, <laughs> they just want to give the information and go, you know, I think, I think you're right. I think they, you know, they don't really want to talk. They just want to, you know, submit the information and get on with it. So, yeah, I think you're right on that. Thank you, Chief. I appreciate that feedback. No problem. Kyle, can you uh, discuss the disparity between price point with the two companies that we've reached? Right. Out? So the two companies that do the things that we would like them to do, one is um, called Rock Solid. Its price point is about uh, 11000 a year. Um, their contracting kind of, um, triggered a couple other things, but so theirs is a little higher. The other company is coming in at 5,000. The feature set is the same. They do pretty much equitable things. There's no real difference in that. There's a couple little things that are different, but would have no effect on the way that we would use the program or how it would be effective for us um, in that way. So it still does all the same things. Um, the other one, the, the other, the cheaper one does though, there is one other benefit to going with that one, which is that in the future, if we wanted to, they have another module for tracking code enforcement as well. So it's a case management system for code enforcement. It's not required. It's not a part of this. It's a separate module that can be purchased if later down the road, we feel as if it was something that we wanted. Um, that is not a feature that the other software has, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's a little additional kind of added benefit. Yeah, I kind of like that too. So, uh, Alex, what do we have to do? What's what's next? How do we do? We have to. Well, um, you've got 
Well, it depends on which contract essentially you want to go with. So you've received a couple of huge disparity quotes, right? So the $11,000 offer uh, per year, for my understanding, looking at the documents, was a three-year contract. So that particular offer from that particular company is way over the public bidding threshold. So if you wanted to go with them, you would have to essentially throw out a public bid, allow them to submit that contract offer and then anybody else as well. If that is completely off the table, um, then you can basically go back through the process and submit um, requests for invitations for persons to give you quotes. Uh, the $5,000 contract that was quoted would not have to be publicly bid. So if you were to accept that, then um, everything would be buttoned up. You'd probably just vote to approve it at your next uh, voting meeting in December. Um, you're kind of in a weird gray area there because you know you've seen a huge disparity. I don't know if you just want to have an abundance of caution, see if there's another app provider in this sphere, just to kind of get a quotation to see where they fall within that range. Um, because that would essentially tell you whether you need to publicly bid this thing out or not. Okay. Uh, was this five thousand dollar a year uh, price? Is is that for a multi year contract or is that? So the way theirs works is theirs is a a true year to year style. So it is you know you you contract for the year and you can pretty much cancel it at any time. You're not contracted in for any extended period of time. It's, what's the, um, what's to stop them from jumping the price from five thousand to ten thousand next year? Uh, well, two things. One, their regular base price is seventy five hundred. So we are actually there. They do a promotion for being the first uh, first for us for the situation that we're in. Um, but then, so, so yeah, let's let's talk about this. So we would be the first municipality they're going to use for the, one of the in this area. So they 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 service other municipalities of our size and smaller in other areas. It's just in this area. So they're used they're, the language that was used to describe it to me is it's kind of a break in. So in when you're in sales of trying to get these types of apps, once you have one, then you go to other neighborhoods and you say, look, this other neighborhood right next door to you that's the same is likes the app they're using it. It's great. You should use it too. And it helps them for their marketing portion. So what they do is the first one or two municipalities that do this, they offer that discounted rate because basically you are then their case to go to other places to make that money back. We're a reference for them now at that point. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Alex, if, 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 if we understand correctly, so it's a $5,000 price point, you would so, rather we not vote on it tonight? You want us to wait? Yeah, I'd rather you just have uh, Kyle and or the borough manager reach out to see if you can find a third provider. Because again, I mean, the, the difference in price is pretty staggering. So if you just had a general idea that this app, for example, was going to cost you around eleven dollars or $12,000 a year, then you would know for sure that you have to throw this out for a public bid. Um, and that's not saying that a different provider couldn't come in on that public bid and then offer you a contract at $5,000 or $6,000 a year. Uh, as Kyle described, this company seems to want to get their foothold in the county. But you would still have to go through the public bidding process. And I'm just a little leery based on that disparity that um, it seems like they're severely undercutting the market, which means that there's probably going to be a third or fourth provider out there that's also over the bidding threshold. So I will, I will do that research. I'll try to find it. These were the two that did, that offered the package in the way that we were looking for. So there are other ones that do one part of it, but don't do the other part, um, which is kind of where we were falling into. So one part would do, they, they do the app, but they don't have the CRM portion there'd be another one that did the CRM. So Salesforce and you know Azure, and there's tons of companies that have CRM packages that do this, but they don't also then provide the mobile app that links into it and the integrated service that you know is what you're looking for. Um, there's ones that don't do the app, but do an optimized website and then do the CRM. So they, I, I will certainly continue to look. It's just, these were the two that did exactly what we were looking for. That doesn't mean others don't exist. It's just, these were the two that came up first. And um, I to did date, you know, Alex, the cheaper one actually has more options for us, right? Right, right. Okay. And there's not saying that if you publicly bid this thing and you're only going to get two responses from the two companies we discussed. Obviously, if you want to go with the lower one, you go with the lower one. Um, 
where you reject all the bids and start over. But um, like I said, that that dollar threshold on the contracts is tripping over the bidding requirements. So out of abundance of caution, you're probably going to have to publicly bid this thing. Um, and I sent you the information that this second company sent me today. So um, we'll we'll look for a third company and try to find an idea of what the pricing looks like. For sure. Wait, what, what is the threshold, Alex? So there's a scale. Um, anything this year, it, it obviously the, the numbers change every year based on uh, inflation and the like. But uh, this year, it's anything up to eleven thousand three hundred dollars. Doesn't require public bidding whatsoever. Uh, there's a range between eleven thousand and twenty-one thousand, which just requires three telephonic quotes, and then anything over that final hurdle requires the full public bidding process. Okay. So the first one, the rock solid, triggers the bidding not because in a year you're spending the 11,300, it's because the totality of the contract is greater than the 11,300 for the three year period, correct? Right, so you take the measure and it's $33,000 is what the contract is off at. Right, okay, that makes sense. All right, uh, so we wanna make sure we get that discount, Kyle. So can you haul ass and, and get that yep. last bid? Okay, all right, thank you. We'll try to get it done as quick as we can so that, uh, um, you know, I don't wanna lose that I don't want another municipality to get that, you know, right. That, uh, that discount. Um, so that said, let's move on to, um, I had one more item, Joe, you skipped one. Uh, you skipped the, yeah, uh, so I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the October 6th, 2020 committee meeting minutes and the October 20th, 2020 council meeting minutes. <clears throat> so moved. So moved. Uh, we need a second. Just I'll second. second. All, right. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, <laughs> any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, turn it over to Public Works, Councilman Willis. Hello again. Um, so first piece, uh, I'd like to make a motion to hire uh, Dan, Fal Dan Falcone as a per diem highway department employee. Um, Alex, I do not know if there needs to be any more details on that. Um, but so yeah, so per diem highway employee. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Please congratulate Mr. Falcone for his reemployment with uh, Barrow Falcroft. He made it over a month. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 46 years on, one month off. Right. <laughs> All right, I'll. Uh, yeah, um, real quick, I just wanted to confirm with Alex. Um, we don't. Do we need to do anything in particular to accept the fee and Lou from Pico? You broke up there. What were you asking, Kyle, about a fee and Lou? Is there anything we need to do to accept it officially, or is it just we just no one said no, so we just accept it? Um, you're gonna have to give me a little bit more detail. What's the fee and Lou for? the pico for the road program so pico is paying half the fee in lieu rather than paving it themselves or giving us half of it so that we pave it all at once in one time do you I have this in, is this written in an agreement lisa i'm assuming um not as of yet okay so what what will happen is once i give them the okay that we're going to accept it uh there'll be paperwork that comes forward um, typically what happens is, that, um, like if it were for Aqua, Aqua asked that we send an invoice to them. Um, Pico has a little bit more formal. I've only done it once with them, um, but it was a reimbursement. This will actually be a check prior to the work. And I'm glad for that because when they've done reimbursements, um, I'm chasing them for a year or a year and a half. So. Uh, that that was a full full agreement that we did for the reimbursement. So I'm hoping it's something shorter than that, but I don't exactly know. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, I say I've only seen it in reimbursement form. Um, so whatever they submit to you, Kyle, uh, then we can just essentially resolve to accept it at the next meeting. Okay, I just wanted to make sure there was nothing we needed to do now. I no, you're fine. Didn't want to leave with nothing to do. Um, and I believe that is everything for me then for this portion. All right, very good. Uh, 
cappuccino. Give me a minute. I got to get back into my agenda here on the phone. <laughs> so, uh, I'd like to turn it over to the Public Safety Committee, Councilmember Skowski. Motion to approve the police chief's report for the month of October 2020. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve the fire chief's report for the month of October 2020. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion to approve the fire marshal's report for the month of October 2020. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Councilman. Moving on to public health and literacy, Councilwoman Isaac. Hi. Yes, I spoke with Jen this week. Um, she will be giving me a calendar of her events. A lot of the stuff that she needs to do that she has been doing is also due to what she needs to do for the state. So some of our programs may interact because she has to have numbers for the state. Okay. And we also talked about myself being included when they have meetings, but she's just been keeping the rest of the board over the phone with up what to do. So we talked about doing Zoom meetings. Yeah, you so guys should probably do. Yeah, try and do December. like some sort of virtual. Yeah. Because I said um, we both need to do better communication as yeah. far as that goes. Because we don't want to so, be but, replicating, we don't want to be replicating <laughs> programs and services between two, you know what I mean? If if the library's doing something that the borough's also doing independent of each other, that's it's silly. It is the best course of, of action would be to join forces and do it together. But um right. You know, I mean that that would be my suggestion. But replicating right. I mean, we Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that starts with communication. So I definitely would want to push that you guys start doing Zoom meetings with the library board. Yes, we we talked about that, like doing the Zoom meetings or just figuring something out on how to better communicate. Okay. And when well, you're, you're ready to, to nail that down, feel free to reach out to Stevie G. He does, you know, he, he, I'm sure he would be, Stevie, are you still on the call? Mr. Gian Cristofaro, I think you're muted. Yes, sir, I am. Okay. So would you be able to help the, the library folks if, if they were, they wanted to move ahead with, with Zoom meetings? Absolutely. No problem. Okay. All right. So Mindy, when it's time, I'll put you in touch with Stevie, but we, we need to get those things. We need to get those meetings uh, rolling. Um, okay. I will be in touch with Jen um, between now and our next, by the end of the month, because I'm going to want her um, program for um, her to send me a picture of the calendar for um, December. So okay. we know what's going on. And if she has something planned already for January, to give that to me as well so we kind of you know she could do two months i don't know how far in advance she is in planned with that okay okay so, and we'll go from there i know we're going to push to do a meeting in december so yeah, i will get in touch with set a date and then we can get in touch with steve to set that up i'll let her know very good that's a good start okay all right thank you councilwoman moving on to municipal planning and zoning councilman waters as for now, Mr. President, I have no yeah. information. Okay, thank you, Mr. Waters. Uh, moving on to uh, public parks and recreation, uh, Councilman Daly is not present. Um, what I can tell you is that I know that uh, that uh, her her recreation committee is already on the move, um, getting uh, Christmas uh, or ho I should say holiday preparations in order. Um, I also wanted to talk to the council about uh, about the changes that are going to be coming in the next few months with the vaccine. Um, I mean, we're probably going to be nailed down into some, into some lockdowns, hotspot lockdowns over the next few months, but the answer is coming. Uh, the solution is coming. And I would like to, uh, I would like to uh, talk to maybe the council about, um, about hosting some sort of a celebration here in town for when we're allowed to talk to each other again. 
I mean, I want like a hoedown. I mean, we, we need to have food trucks on the street and all kinds of fun stuff going on. But I, I, I want to have a celebration when this damn thing is over because I am so over it. What does anybody think about that? I 100% agree with you on that to do something big. I think that that would be awesome, you know, because there's a lot of people that it's hard to be in contact with people. So I think definitely something big. Street or some kind of street fair or something. But I mean, I want to do something. So I, I will, I'll forward that off to Lee. Um, but uh, I'm kind of stealing her show here and, and her, but that it is under recreation, but I, I think it's something that uh, she's good at. So, um, you know, with all of us together, we could probably come up with one, one heck of a, an event, but it's just something I wanted to throw out there. The end is in sight. Please hang on. We're getting there. Um, but, uh, but I wanted to bring that up. So moving on to municipal legislation, I'm sorry, somebody, somebody I just, uh, I, for Lee, I, for Lee's sake, I just wanted to go over the event list for the holidays since I have it in front of me. Yes, please do. So, um, starting on tomorrow, the ornament pickups for the craft bags. So in the borough hall, we'll start, um, there are craft bags already out there that people can pick up just like all the other events. Um, on the 28th will be the tree lighting and um, some treats out. The 28th you will also get, so the craft bags are ornaments. So there's an adult bag and a kid's bag. They both have ornaments. So you make the ornaments in the craft bag and then you can hang them on the, um, the tree. Uh, on the 30th, there is going to be another set of holiday craft bags that can be picked up starting then. And then there are also uh, currently with the craft bags, um, letters for Santa. So you, you kids can fill out letters to Santa and put them on envelopes. There'll be a drop off starting on the 30th where they can drop off those letters at Borough Hall as well for um, Santa. And then the house decoration, another house decorating contest um, will be the submission date deadline for that will be the 13th of December. Um, I'm sure Lee will post some more details about exactly where to submit and how that will work. And then the last piece is on the 19th of December, there will be a winner announced for that house decorating contest. But that is all of the events on the list. Okay, very good. Moving on to municipal legislation, Councilman Waters. Uh, once again, Mr. President, I have no more information. You do actually, uh, there is, um... <laughs> Do you want me to, you want me, I mean, I have the, 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 I have it in front of me. Let me, you want me to just read through it for you? Please. Okay. So uh, I'd like to uh, discuss the consideration of a resolution to authorize the borough council president, the council vice president, and the borough manager to act as authorized signers on all borough financial accounts. Again, so we would like to motion for the consideration of, or we would like to motion for a resolution. Um, so I would like to entertain a motion for a resolution. Joe, Joe, uh, before you make that motion, there is an error in that description. So technically what you are doing tonight is you're doing two things. You are authorizing the offices of borough council president and vice president to act as signatories and depositories on the borough financial accounts. And what you're actually doing instead of the borough manager is you're appointing an assistant treasurer uh, to serve in the interim of the absence of the ordinary treasurer. Uh, and that so happens to be that you're designated the office of borough manager to fulfill that role. So there is a distinction there. Can the borough manager, who is also the borough secretary, also serve as the assistant treasurer? Yes. Okay. But he can't serve as the treasurer treasurer. Correct. Okay. So he's only authorized in this situation to serve in the absence of the treasurer. And because obviously right now you have an interim financial uh, service provider working for the borough, uh, we felt it was best to just appoint the backup treasurer right now. So whenever you do hire someone permanently into that position, then the borough manager would not have signatory power over the uh, financial account. Okay, all right, so what, what do I need to, so what do I need to do first? Do we need to, to appoint him assistant treasurer? Same resolution. It's just um, you want to read it to, let me, let's go back to it. So you're just going to say consideration of a resolution authorized the borough council president and council vice president to act as authorized signatures on all borough financial accounts and to appoint the position of assistant treasurer. Okay. So I, 
like the consideration of a resolution to authorize the borough council president, the council vice president uh, to act as authorized signatures uh, on all borough financial accounts, as well as to appoint uh, or to establish or appoint the office of uh, assistant treasurer. Do I have? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No, okay. All right, so that motion carries unanimously. Just a little backstory. So the financial directors that we had prior to, uh, I guess a couple months ago, uh, when we first took office, they were directed to change over the signatures on all of the borough accounts. They failed to do that. There were several accounts where our former council president and a council member who's no longer even serving were still the signatories on, on uh, municipal accounts. Um, and those accounts had significant amounts of significant amount of money in them. Um, there were, I think, something to the tune of 11 or 12 accounts that the municipality has, which is also almost unheard of. So we're going to be in the course of the next few months, we're going to be streamlining the finances the way they're supposed to be streamlined and not paying somebody $335,000 a year to do it. So um, that's all I've got to say on that. Uh, Andrew, did you want to add anything? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Mike can jump in here too. I just want to be clear. We aren't aware of the amounts in all of the accounts. I'm only aware of the amount in one account uh, that we were not signers of. And I'm not even sure of what the actual current balance is. Uh, there, there are five accounts uh, with a particular bank that, that uh, uh, we were not aware of. Those accounts are being, uh, with this, this resolution would give us access to those accounts. So we could actually see what's in them. Um, there are some outstanding checks that the borough has received. I discussed one of this was one of these issues with Councilman Ruskowski earlier regarding a check that we received, and we just want to just put everything together. So at this moment, this is not about you know concerns necessarily over impropriety or anything like that. This is just about getting us access to those accounts, and, and nothing more as of right now. And again, I am not aware there could be one dollar in those accounts. So Correct. Well, we're, the one account, Andrew is actually your EIT and LST money flow through there. So there is there is significant funds that are in one Hundreds of those Hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah. Correct, <laughs> right, yeah, so, no, no doubt. And, and we're I just mean, I'm, I'm not suggesting impropriety either, but I am just stating the facts. They were advised to do this back in January and they failed to do it. And not only that, they lied to me and told me that they did it. And then we found out that they didn't do it. So this is the sort of thing that just pisses me off. And I'm not afraid to say that and on a public forum and I want everybody to know it. So if uh, you were at all not cued in, that now you know how I feel about that. Well, um, for, well, for the good news, I, I spoke to Keystone <laughs> Collection Group this morning, and you had a nice little uh, EIT uh, payment to, uh, that hit today, uh, pre-lockdown. So, 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 so that was before COVID. So things were bouncing back, and it was a higher than expected number that was based upon basically last year's number. So that's good. So for EIT, uh, do we have a? Do we? Can we talk? Do we have a number roughly? Uh, I don't know what the balance is in that account, <laughs> but but based upon the last year number, it came in. It came in similar to to last to, to the third quarter number of last year. Okay. All right. So I could. Uh, I'd have all the numbers together for a for finance committee meeting when I can put all the Keystone numbers together. They get. We we sat down this morning with them. Uh, via Zoom to discuss the, the budget number for 2021. Okay, so that's good news. I think we were supposed to start feeling the budget reduction now or the, the income reduction around this time. So is that right? Am I right to? Correct, they're cautious about next year and, and they really wouldn't uh, confirm a number, but I, but I have a good idea where we need to go with the, the EIT and LST. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. So um, moving on to, um, I'm sorry, Andrew, did you say that uh, Mike Diaz wanted to comment on any of this? Uh, not about this portion. I brought him on one uh, because you had asked me previously to have all of our uh, contractors be made aware of the meetings and also to discuss if there were any issues related to hiring Dan Falcone or another matter that I'm going to discuss in the borough manager's report in a moment. Okay. Um, I'd so rather moving, wait to get to that point to discuss that. Yeah, let's get to uh, the municipal uh, to the new construction committee. 
Councilman Wait, Willis. Joe, before you go there, uh, maybe I just missed it, but did you guys actually vote to approve the resolution? I believe yeah. we did. Okay. Didn't we? Yep. We did. Andrew? Yeah, I think it was a unanimous. Yep. Yeah, it was unanimous. Yeah, and then I went off on my tangent. Sorry about that. So <laughs> moving, on the, <laughs> moving on to the new construction committee, Councilman Willis. All right. So um, uh, Lisa had already covered a lot of those updates, which was the DEP stuff. The other huge update is that DCED has approved us for the loan. So now we are in the closing process for that loan. So hopefully that will move just as quickly as the DCED um, approval did, seeing as that moved much quicker than it could have. Um, so our last huge hurdle for moving and breaking ground is going to be that DEP approval, which is our final external approval. Once we have that, then we can move into the process of signing the contracts with the contractor and then starting the process of uh, moving forward. Um, so I know there was about 16 emails today about scheduling something to close, to talk about closing on the loan um, that I saw going back and forth. So that is already on its way to getting done. Um, so we're just trying to get as much of this done as quickly as we can so that we can beat the cold so we can start the project this year and not have to really either spend a bunch of money on heating for starting it this year or you know, possibly not be able to start it this year at all, depending on freezing for concrete pouring. So that's where we're at right now. You are muted, Joe. <laughs> Sorry about that. So do we have a time frame yet or no? It's really kind of depends on what's going on with DEP. So she, uh, she's going to look at it on Friday. Um, so if it's approved, then we can start hitting the ground running. I still won't, wouldn't feel comfortable telling you exactly, you know, a specific date or time, but that would be great news if that was done because then we're, you know, there's far less things between us and actually getting started. Um, so I, I wouldn't feel comfortable giving you a timeline to then come back a week from now and tell you that I was wrong and actually it's going to be, you know, X number of days, but it's moving. It's moving in the correct direction. We're, we're seeing progress. Okay, good. Good enough. All right, so um, let's move on to um, the police chief's report. Thank you, Mr. President and Council. Um, at the police department, everything's working pretty smooth as far as with the COVID. We had a couple officers have COVID, uh, but not an outbreak to where we can't fill shifts and as such. Um, Anti-crime is doing a great job. Like I said, I gave you that information at the committee meeting. Um, I know of two other things that are gonna be happening this week, um, but um, they're, they're doing a great job as well with that. Um, parking seems to be, parking tickets went up this month, or last month, uh, as you can see with the report. Um, there's more gas line stuff going on. They should be out of here possibly by the end of the year. Um, they're going to be starting on Delmar Drive pretty soon, so um, the residents will be happy with that when they're out of here finally, I think. Uh, what else? Um, we had the shots fired on um, Elmwood Avenue, which um, was just, from what we believe, is just a random just shooting up in the air type thing, not like a drive-by, but there was also the same thing done in Prospect Park. And uh, we have a picture of that vehicle and we're working on that as we speak um, about maybe um, seeing if that was the same vehicle involved. Um, but as far as anything else, that's about it. All right, thank you very much, Chief. All right, so we're moving on to the solicitor's report. Uh, not much to report uh, since the last time we uh, met a week ago. Um, <laughs> my fingerprints have kind of been all over some of the other agenda items today. Uh, big, of course, was the DCD application approval. We'll get the loan uh, pretty much squared away. It doesn't look like there's, I'm knocking on wood here because I always say it, but doesn't look like there are really any hurdles left or any, um, you know, anything that would prevent the bank from closing on this pretty quick. And in my discussions with the bank rep and their attorney today, they seem pretty eager and willing to finish this thing out for you guys. So that should be pretty fast. 
Um, that odd duck of an item I uh, mentioned last week with your intermunicipal liquor license, license transfer, um, just a little update on that. I did reach out to the applicant and sent them criteria and uh, essentially procedures that'll follow. Uh, if anybody's familiar with the conditional use procedure uh, for um, zoning land development, it's essentially gonna follow the same exact criteria there. There's gonna be an application, a ton of information submitted to you guys. We're gonna take a look at all the information then we're gonna have a public hearing uh, on the record, a court report will be there and all that fun stuff. Um, because you guys don't do this uh, very often and quite frankly, it pops up maybe like once every couple of years in each municipality, um, I drafted criteria for you which we'll use, but you'll also have to pass a resolution in order to set uh, an application and processing fee for this particular type of application. I guarantee you don't have it. Um, so we'll put our minds together between myself, Lisa's office and Andrew and come up with a solid number for that. Um, but other than that, everything's gonna track. We'll pass that in December and then they should have their application in January. We'll either see a January or a February hearing on that matter. Still have no information on what actually they're going to do with it. It looks like they vaguely referred to um, the liquor license type as an R, which is the standard retail uh, restaurant liquor license. So they could be using it for 800 different ways. Uh, so we don't have any more details on that or the location yet, but I'm sure they'll come. Other than that, uh, that's pretty much all I have. All right, very good. And so at the time of the application, does council have any input on the approval or denial of it? Yeah, I mean, that's the rule. So, you know, without the borough's approval after the hearing on the record, then... Um, I'm losing you. I'm losing you, Alex. I'm sorry. Good. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, you guys are the gatekeeper. Essentially, even if they get uh, approval from the PLCB, the trains for the liquor, if uh, you guys do not decide it's in the best interest of the borough to allow that transfer, then um, essentially that license is not coming into the borough. So, I mean, there will be a thoroughly vetted application packet with, you know, dozens of pages of material based on the location, the use, the surrounding characters. The public will be invited. Um, notice, just like zoning, um, residents within 500 feet of the proposed location will have to be notified. Uh, and they'll be able to appear as parties to the hearing as well. So you'll have a full hearing on it before you make your decision. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good. Is it that's everything, Alex? Yep, that's everything. Awesome. All right, so we're moving on to the finance director's report. Uh, Mr. Hill. Uh, we have a number of items that we were working on as far as uh, once we get the bank accounts. Uh, uh, with I was in the borough uh, last Thursday, I believe, with Councilman Willis to, to try to get the uh, QuickBooks files off the server. Unfortunately, it was unsuccessful again. Uh, it's the old, on the server, our IT guy believes there's only through 2014. So we need to get access to the uh, laptop, I believe that would have the QuickBooks file. So we're just starting over with, so we're basically doing finances with it, with no beginning balance on any of the accounts. So it's not, it's not an optimum way of, of, of starting. So it poses a problem for us. So we need, I sent an email out today that, that would, uh, that we need to get that rectified as soon as possible. Yes, I did. I did see the email. Um, now let me just, I just want to, for the record, uh, for our manager, Heyman, you did request from our former finance directors, the complete QuickBook file to the current date. Am I correct? Yes. And they failed to provide that to you as well. I believe I was told, and I, I apologize, this is not something that I've had to deal with too intimately since then. Um, I believe that I was told that it was on the server, uh, Councilman Willis, uh, and I downloaded that uh, QuickBooks file, which we were told was most recent and found it, it was not. And it's only up until 2014. Right. right. Our, our IT specialist is willing to come down and take a look. Uh, if that computer that the server if the, is attached to has QuickBooks on it, I mean, we can certainly try to open up and, and look at some transactions, but I'm not sure that that, Andrew, you'd probably be best. I don't know if QuickBooks is even on the computer. So if you clicked on a file, you wouldn't be able to open it. I don't Which, believe so. No. Yeah. 
I just so wanted we, to get it on public record that the information was requested and and the, and the um and that uh, what was requested was they failed to produce. So I just wanted to make sure that was on public record here. The, yeah. I, make sure, I, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. Understood. And I, I stood behind Councilman. Uh, I stood behind Kyle, and and uh, I watched him back up every file on there to the thumb drive. And I, I didn't see it, so I think whatever's there, so he gave he gave to me. But again, it's only through 2014, right? Which was definitely not what we asked them for. And I apologize, Mike. We're gonna uh, we know where the computer is. I will uh, make sure that that is taken care of. Okay. Um, and what, what whenever that can be set up, our IT guys willing to come down and 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 just copy the information. Okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. Uh, on to the borough manager's report. One second, Joe. Sure. All right. So a couple of things I wanted to talk about. I sent out a borough manager's report. It was relatively light for the month. We're dealing with other things right now that you know either cannot be discussed or wouldn't be you know appropriate to discuss in this meeting. Um, that being said, a couple of things that I want you guys to know about, some of which council members might discuss under new business, but um, Diane, she does cleaning services for us in the borough hall. I believe the company is called DNN. I can't remember that part offhand, uh, but her employee Joyce is the one who does the work uh, regularly. They come in twice a week for about three hours each time. Uh, unfortunately, Diane is no longer going to be in business going forward, and um, I we still need to have the borough offices clean. So I suggest that we, uh, and that's the other reason I had uh, Mike Diaz, I believe if he's still here, just wanted to discuss briefly um, to bring in uh, at least on a temporary basis during COVID for the next six months, a year, and then re-examine, uh, bring in Diane as an independent contractor and then just pay her from the borough and every time that she arrives for that service. Um, I think that's the right idea. I actually think it would save us some money generally going forward. Maybe not a ton of money, but a couple hundred dollars a month. Um, I, I would advise that given that she comes to the borough about eight times per month, um, that we pay her about $600 a month for that work. We should we offer that to her, uh, see if that would be for the amount of time that she's in. She's in for about you know, two to three hours each time. Um, but uh, I don't know what council members think about that. Something that a motion could, I guess, theoretically be made under new business. Um, the, uh, we should probably discuss a shutdown if we end up going into another shutdown, my understanding from talking with state officials is that uh, a, a statewide shutdown like we saw in March is not likely, but a countywide shutdown of services like restaurants, uh, bars, and other you know, venues is probably coming. I, I did, there's no timeline for it, and I don't want anybody to hear this and think that this means this is going to be tomorrow morning, but it happened in Philadelphia. Rates are skyrocketing. Uh, sometime between now and December 1st, I would expect this. Um, I think that it, council should be you know, prepared to act if need be to close the offices down again. I'm getting things set up in the office now, contingency plan wise, in case we need to do that. That way we're ready to go um, and we're not caught off guard like we were in March. I think that's important. Um, another, another thing is, Sean, are you still here? Yes, I'm still on here. Okay. So I'm going to bring this up if anybody has any questions. Week ago. Can't hear you, Andrew. Oh, you hear me now? Very, very vaguely. I don't know what happened. Um, Go ahead, try again. Everybody who's not speaking, try to use your mute button. Maybe the background noise is, is muffling things. So uh, about a week ago, we uh, became aware that there's an issue with the lighting in the police department. The lights turn off. There's something wrong with the actual sockets, I think, themselves. Um, I, uh, there's a, uh, that if you turn the lights off, they don't come back on sometimes for a long period of time or at all. And I don't think it's fair to make our officers operate in a condition like that, where they don't know if they're gonna have lighting in their own offices. Um, and so, uh, we called in Mecca electric Mecca gave us an estimate this morning, if I'm not mistaken, at seven o'clock, uh, that it would cost a total of $2,900 to replace the 13 lights that are out in the ceiling. Um, Anyway, that's the estimate they gave us to do that repair. I believe we have a contract with them, so it's in line with that, but I wanted you to be aware of the expense and approve it, considering that we got that quote today, and I think it's important that we get that stuff fixed. 
So wait, you want us to spend three thousand dollars in a building that we're going to be bulldozing into the hole it was built on in a couple months? Unfortunately, I, I don't. I don't want us to be doing it, but I think we have to do it. Um, the other, the only other option is that we risk the police lights just not working, and then not having lighting in the police station, and no, then we we're going to have to get. Either. We can't. Then we have to get Mecca in here, and we're not going to be able to get it done right away. So, I think better to deal with this problem now than be stuck without lights up there for a week. So wait, how, how many lights have to be replaced and why? I believe it's 13, some sort of electrical problem that I'm not qualified to discuss. Sean, do you want to jump in? Yeah, so um, 11 of them lights are in the squad room, I believe the, uh, the term is, uh, where they enter their, um, their reports. Um, sometimes they come on, sometimes they don't come on. Um, sometimes you have to keep flicking the... Uh, switch on and off several times uh, for them to work. Um, after talking to Mecca Electric today, he said that they are outdated fluorescent lights um, just to swap out parts for them um, wouldn't be the smart thing to do. Um, I, I believe that the lunchroom, uh, them lights are newer. They must have been replaced within the past couple of years. Um, and then some of the other lights, I believe there's one in the chief's office that, uh, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't work. Um, and then one in the hallway that is completely burned out. Um, it actually looked like it, it, it blew up at one point, but, uh, it's just an electrical nightmare in the building altogether. So the, can, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Did Bill, did Bill say anything about just replacing ballasts? Yeah, I did talk to uh, Bill, and he said that the lights are so outdated in that squad room that to replace the ballots with time and money, it's just cheaper to replace with LED uh, lighting. I mean... They need to have lights. They got to have lights in the police station. But spending $3,000 on a building that we're going to be vacating soon just just kills me. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, is there some is there some sort of middle road? <clears throat> Maybe I can make this a little bit lighter. Um, Pico Smart Ideas, if we contact them, uh, any of the lights that you are replacing, because you're going from fluorescence, old, old fluorescence to LED, there is, I don't know what the number is right at the moment, but if you, if you register a project, um, Smart Ideas will, will pay you, will refund you some of that money because you're changing the wattage, number one, but you're changing, also changing the fixture. So you could- I have a suggestion. Okay, that, that's actually, that sounds, that sounds good. So what do we have to, do we have to, do we submit for reimbursement after the work is done? You have to first register. So if you would call, what you would do is you either go online or you contact Pico Smart Ideas. That's, okay. that's the name of the, of the program. Um, let them know that you're a municipality. Actually, it asks you that. And you'll talk to a representative they'll register that you're doing a project. And from there, then once you have it completed, what needs to happen though is you need to, you need to make sure that you, you list all of the lights that you are replacing and what you're replacing them with. So you'll need wattages, et cetera. But I'm sure Bill knows how to do that. Bill Mecca knows how to do that. Um, you know, it'll be something at least. I don't know how much. Maybe, maybe a few hundred dollars. I'm not really sure what the numbers are right now. Right. Um, it's the uh, same program uh, that if you were doing your refrigerator, and, yeah, and you get like twenty five dollars for replacing your refrigerator. It's the same idea. However, it's with light fixtures and the um, and the bulbs themselves. Yeah, I mean, because we're going to get all this new hardware, and we can't take that with us to the new building. I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, it's just terrible waste. I just, I hate to, you know, I hate to see it, see us waste that kind of money. But yeah, let's let's try that. Um, so Lisa, I will definitely. We, I, oh, excuse me. Uh, I will definitely reach out to Bill tomorrow morning and ask him if he can provide that with uh, 
getting in touch with Pico and seeing if they could even do reimbursement to the borough after the job's complete. Um, look, I'm not crazy about spending that money either, but at the same time, um, we can't have lights go out for hours at a time during the day, uh, during the work day, or even for me on the weekend for somebody to call saying the lights are out. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's definitely something that's going to have to be addressed. Bill, okay. Bill Mecca would not I have do a, that. I have people. a suggestion. Wait a minute. Uh, let Lisa, sorry, Mindy, let Lisa, Lisa, go ahead. Bill, Bill Mecca would not do that with Pico. That would be something you would do here in the, in the office. So it would be the borough responsibility to do that. Okay, right. I'll I'll try to reach out to Pico tomorrow, or maybe Andrew can give them a call. All right. Uh, yeah, I can I can talk to them. I'll call Michelle just if I need any advice. But okay, yeah, Michelle yeah, Gary's yeah. awesome. So she she okay, cool. So uh, so what do we do? We need to do we need to pass the resolution out to approve the what are we doing? Or do I, what, I assume we. Don't I have a resolution. suggestion. Yes, Mindy. I don't know if we can do this or not, but since we really don't want to spend the money on a building, we are going to demolish. Is it possible to have, locate the police in where the fire hall is or um, even putting them, like, say, with Sharon Hill for the time being? Because figure it's going to only probably the- be... The moving the, the moving costs the the hardware all their computers are they're they're super secure they have secure networks set up to that location it would be a, it would just it would end up we can't we can't do that um, there's a cost involved in that as well. I was just to make well. a suggestion that's all. Yeah no it was a good one it was a good one I mean if we were if we were talking more long term if we had another year left I would say let's move them we, we got to get them moved out of there because I, I don't particularly like that work environment anyway um, I think they deserve to be in a, some place a little bit better than that. But, um, you know, again, we're, we're talking about a matter of months here. So I, I don't want to spend that kind of money for a relocation. It would, it would be cheaper to just eat the 3000 So, a- Andrew, I need to ask, what are we doing? Are we, are we waiting to do, – do you need to call Pico Smart, whatever the, the thing is, tomorrow? I, I will call them, but reg- regardless, this really needs to get fixed. I'm, I'm suggesting that you guys – So then do we – do we, can we approve the – is there – Alex, is there a way to approve that expenditure now? Um, contingent upon something with, or, or, or I mean, including... Joe, we, we, don't know, we don't know exactly what we're going to get back from Pico. I'm, I, I'm glad to hear about that. Cause I wasn't, I'm not familiar with the details of that program. I, I've heard of it before, but well then let's get the expense approved. Alex, what do I need to do? It's very hard to authorize an expense that you don't know that you're going to expend. Um, well, we do know that we're going to expand it. We have to do it. It's about. Let's really, put it uh, this way, um, Andrew. What what would be the outer bound of what the borough is willing to spend on the project? I, I believe you could authorize an expenditure up to a certain amount um, in order so, to get something official on the record tonight. So I understand that we have an agreement with them already for for you know doing repair work like this. I, I may be mistaken with that. Somebody could correct me if they know or jump in. Um, it's going to cost 20. The estimate they gave us was $2,900 to fix the lights. Um, the Pico money, that's a reimbursement we may or may not get. I mean, there's no way to, I, we should not count on that. I would like to get it and I hope it's good, but we don't even know. We're talking hypothetical here about what that would be. But either way, I mean, these bulbs really got to get fixed and the, the flat price that we're, flat price that we're given is $2,900. So why don't you make a motion, Joe, or somebody to authorize an expenditure on those lights in an amount not to exceed $3,000. All right, I'd like to entertain a motion to authorize an expenditure for the light replacement of the police department in the amount not to exceed $3,000. Second. Second. All Um, those in favor? uh, Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Just so Andrew. it wasn't clear to me, who who actually made the motion? I heard Councilman Water second it. I I made this. I so moved. All right. All right. Thank you very much. I'll let them know tomorrow. Um, all, right. all right. Something else we want to discuss in the borough manager report. Uh, we have had a couple of issues here now, and I want Council uh, Alex. If this needs to be in an executive session, cut me off, please. Um, but I wanted to discuss that we have uh, a couple of checks that have come in, state aid for pension funds, things like that. I think it's mostly DCED money uh, that uh, was received by uh, the previous uh, finance director 
that wasn't moved from the general fund in the time that they were employed by the borough into the, the, the funds that were required. So again, there was a check for state aid this month um, that we discovered had been received on or about September 30th. That should have been by, by state law, I believe, moved into uh, from our general fund to the pension um, by, uh, and Mike Hill, you can please jump in as well. By October 30th, we weren't even aware of it until November. We overnighted it and got that check in, but there will probably be fees associated with it. Don't know what they're going to be. Same thing has come up. Um, as I mentioned previously or touched on, uh, there is a 32, approximately $32,000 uh, outstanding check that was received from the uh, 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 it's, it's, it's state aid for the uh, fireman's relief check. That for the, money, for the what relief we check? We believe it's the fireman's relief check. It's money that's got to go to the fire department, not our money. Uh, we think it, I'm not even sure that it went into the general fund. It may be in one of the m &T accounts, but we, we can't find it. And it was got within receiving it, we have 60 days to put it, to get it to the fire department. I believe it's 60 days. Uh, we're rapidly approaching that and we don't even know where it is yet. I wanted to make you aware because this may be an issue. Right. We searched the Republic Bank account uh, for that amount when Andrew let us know what the amount was and, and we, we couldn't identify it being a deposit. So a very, it may be in one of the other bank accounts, but we'll have to wait till we get access to those. So they lost $32,000 is what you're trying to tell me. We don't know. If, we're, if we're, it, it might be deposited in one of the other, other bank accounts that we don't have access to, or it might be just not cashed or lost or so. It, it could be, we really don't know. All right. So if we lose that money, uh, Alex, are we able to bill the Pacentis for the thirty-two thousand dollars that they lost? All right, on mute. That is a subject for executive session. Uh, we'll just we'll discuss any and all legal options that are available to the borough before uh, acting. In the meantime, uh, can somebody get in contact with the source of that check, the thirty-two thousand dollars check, to find out if it was if it was cashed? They they could do they could put a tracer on the check with their bank account. They could find out who cashed it, where it was cashed, what account numbers it was cashed to, or deposited in. I worked in banking for fifteen years. I would know enough to know that that especially checks are trackable. So find out the source of that thirty-two thousand dollars check and 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 put a tracer on it. Absolutely. Uh, that was going to be my suggestion before we discuss uh, potential options. I'm not qualified to know them. So, um, yeah, that was going to be my suggestion is that's that's what we do. And that, there may be other things out there. We're going to need to discuss uh, those things later on. But um, the uh, last thing that I have here on my list is to discuss, uh, uh, as, as you're aware, we're bringing Danny in to do this uh, leaf uh, collection. Sean, mm -hmm. just wanted to touch on it for you that, you know, the guys are out there, leaf collection, uh, all the leaves fell at once, my understanding, sometime at the end of last week because of the temperature changes. And so they're all over the streets and we're just hustling to get this stuff done. It's why it's important that we bring Danny in uh, starting literally tomorrow morning to help get these leaves off the street because we don't want it to snow. As Sean has told me, if it snows on top of those wet leaves, I'm going to be in trouble with drains getting clogged. They're open right now, but, you know, it, it'll be a, it can be a problem very quickly. Sean, if you want to add anything to that, please feel free to do so. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, me and Neil been out every day pretty much doing a, a load of leaves or maybe like a load and load and a half. Uh, we got pretty much all of old Falcroft um, gone through first time. Uh, we're working down the village section. Uh, I anticipate that being wrapped up by the end of this week. And then we'll just start back over again. Um, with the temperature changing last week, like Andrew said, I feel as though a lot more leaves came down Um last week so now we're kind of playing catch up but um it, it's going to be good having dan as an extra set of hands um and he's only going to be able to work uh 20 hours a week so i'll make sure that uh he stays under that limit all right very good Excuse me, this is Mickey as apologies for jumping in, but I know the first item that was going to be discussed uh, was relating to the possibility of bringing on a 1099 contractor to do some cleaning. Uh, the reason why I was asked uh, to join tonight was just in case folks wanted to have a discussion about uh, the differences between a 1099 and an employee, just wanting to make sure that everybody feels comfortable with that. There is some risk that is associated with having a 1099. Uh, however, uh, based on the statement of work being almost exactly what was contracted out previously. This being a short-term arrangement, I sent a 
uh, copy of a template for uh, Andrew to review uh, so that when you guys do create the contract with this potential contractor, it will have a time frame defined and a defined statement of work in which the person will have a lot of discretion as to do the work uh, just as they did before. I think you guys are largely fine uh, with mitigating that risk. It's just you want to make sure that you review it uh, like Andrew said before, six months from now, maybe middle of next year, uh, once things uh, settle down and determine whether or not you want to continue going through a 1099 or if you want to look at possibly contracting with another cleaning company. Is that clear to everybody or does anybody have any questions about? Yeah, that, that's that's clear. So well, did you want approval for this 1099 employee today, Andrew? Yes, I think, think it's important because this business is, I believe, now officially done. Um, All right. I believe now. So. All right. Uh, Mike, what were your cautions against the 1099er? Uh, basically, and this is standard, when you, uh, there's always a question of when is a person a contractor and when is a person an employee. Uh, the IRS asks about 23 questions to try to ascertain this. The tricky piece is that they don't actually have a defined set of questions. You have to answer right to be right or wrong uh, on that side of the equation. Uh, based on my experience, this seems very low risk. The one area that seems a little bit wonky to me is that the former cleaning company was using fall cropped equipment, which seems a little off. Uh, I would suggest if you guys look in the future beyond this, maybe rectifying that. But, um, you know, uh, uh, overall, I think, like I said, if you guys review it next June and determine how you want to proceed from there, it, that would probably be enough to be pretty low risk. This is not essential work uh, to the purpose of the, of the borough, right? You're, you're doing this to maintain the people who are there. It was previously contracted. Uh, like I said, I think that the risk is relatively small. Uh, what the risk is, is basically you contract out with this person. They may later say that they were an employee and file unemployment when that arrangement ends, and you'd have to basically say no, they were a contractor. The language that they're going to sign up for, if they use the template that uh, I provided Andrew, uh, explicitly lists what that relationship is and that they are a contractor. They're also on the hook for their side of the employment taxes, so they hopefully are aware of that. I would probably, uh, you know, based on what they do for a living, I would suggest Andrew maybe say that when they're having that discussion, just so they're aware of what they're signing up for. Um, uh, the other risk is if you deliberately misclassify people, you can get in a lot of trouble, but I don't think that's the case here, pretty clearly. Okay, all right, so let's just get this approved then. Do we, do we wanna... Um... Or does anybody else want to discuss about the, the cleaning people? Anybody have anything to add? Or can we entertain a motion to, is it Diane Highland? Yes. What was it, a rate of $600 a month in memory service, correctly? Uh, she's currently, they're currently receiving $750, but I assume if we're going to bring in this person as an independent contractor and not uh, engaging with a company anymore, that it would be uh, lower. So yes, yeah, $600, I think, is appropriate for the amount of cleaning that gets done. Okay. All right, so I'd like to entertain a motion to uh, bring in Diane Highland as a 1099 contracted employee for the amount of $600 a month. So moved. We've got a so moved and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Okay. Uh, right, Andrew, I have. I have Apologize. So it's actually uh, the employee is um, is, is Joyce Constriciani, and I'm sure Diane was the person she worked for. I apologize for that. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, Joe. Uh, do I need to? Okay. So I'd, I'd, yeah. I'd like to motion to repeal the the last uh, motion or the last the last action. Yeah, Alex. Does he actually need to repeal it, or can he just reword it with Joyce's name instead? This motion to amend it. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Alex. I'd like to motion to amend it to uh, from Diane Highland. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to amend it from uh, the employee being Diane Highland to uh, Joyce Contriciani. Second. I need a so moved first. So, so moved. moved. And uh, I think Nick has seconded. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion carries unanimously. Andrew, go ahead. Got it. All right. Last, last quick thing. Don't want it to be a topic of discussion for too long tonight. It'll be discussion uh, at our December committee meeting. But um, for our December meeting, I'll send out a policy that I'm currently working on with Mike Diaz. We've essentially completed it. Uh, uh, it would be a borough policy regarding reimbursement. Noticed some issues with the, the way reimbursement policy was done previously, um, which we will summarize but uh, later on. But, um, but just to expect that uh, coming up, we're working on it. Okay. All right, uh, Andrew, moving forward, is there any way that we could, uh, instead of doing a lot of these items in new business, could we send a, a, a finalized agenda the day of the meeting? Sure. For, every, for everyone, just so we could get these things in their, in their category. Um, so that, because it, it just feels. Uh, yeah, no, I understand. Technically we're still in the borough manager's report yet, I, I believe, but uh, so I apologize. And, and unfortunately, the two of them came up today, so I can we can send that out. Okay. All right. All right. And I appreciate that. I, I, it's no no way a criticism. Just it would make it no, easier no, no. for for I think sure. everybody. Um, all right. So that said, is there any old business to to cover? Is there anything under new business to discuss? All right. Very good. Uh, I want to thank everybody tonight. Um, uh, may I entertain a motion to adjourn? Motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Everybody have a good night and thank you for your service. Good, good night. Bye. Good night, have a great everybody. night, everybody. Bye bye. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving.